Hello there and welcome back. Today I will be breaking down this short animated film I made in Blender. This is my first ever short animated 3D film in Blender, so I thought to make a breaking down video of how I made it because I think it will be helpful. There will be uh, timestamps in the description down below. Along with that, you will find all the tutorials I used to create this short animated film. And if you have any questions, please do leave them in the comments down below. It was a one beautiful day under the shower and where I had this image and that in my head at least it looked very cinematic and I thought, oh you know that that that's actually very cool. The image was two big monitors hanging from the ceiling with a lot of cables, right? Because that would look futuristic, I guess. At least in my head. And in the middle, in the center of the frame, to have a chessboard with the light to like only the chessboard and some of the the monitors to be a little bit mysterious. That was my starting point. That was my idea. I only knew the beginning and the end. Usually, most of the stories, despite of their format, they have beginning, a middle, and an end. So it, once you have your idea, what you want to create, right? Before opening Blender and making your m amazing 3D animated film, you have to start somewhere. So we're here, we're at the story point. People choose to either write a script, and if you have more than one character, or even one character who has lines or a dialogue, or if there is a narrative, yes, go ahead and write your script. But I wanted to keep it simple, and I didn't know how long would be my story, so I start off this whole uh, execution uh, and developing the story with storyboards. If you're not good at drawing, that's okay, you don't have to be super precise with your sketching. I mean, you don't have to be Michelangelo or what was that? Something Picasso, he won't amount to a thing. With that in mind, you can even use simple shapes to, to present your storyboard because that's once you look at the whole storyboard in sequence you will see the story playing if you haven't watched this video i think it's a behind the scenes of uh, creating an episode i believe of samurai jack there they rarely use any any script they just brainstorm an idea with the team and they just present that into storyboards and they see the movement of the story and how it progresses so i was trying to cut my time with the with the writing and just make it into visual images again if you're not feeling very comfortable that's okay but at the end of the day if you're making this film by yourself for yourself i mean if you know what you're drawing if you know that this square is a character for example and this circle is another character that's all you need also making storyboards are very vital because they're helping you to establish to block out your scene so you save some time once you go to Blender and try to position everything together. For the time being, I said to myself, well, they'll play chess. You know, that's my, that's my story. Like we have a beginning to establish a scene. The middle one, we, they will just play chess, I guess. A lot of they fight. <laughs> Very exciting, I know. And by the end of my story, I wanted to show a pawn transform into a queen. I didn't know how that would happen, but that was my my first story that I had in mind. And obviously, I made sure to put it on paper so no, I don't forget it. And that's also helpful if you don't want to do the whole storyboard, you can just write it down in short sentences. That also works. Finally, open Blender and model the characters and see how many characters in the first place to add the materials to those characters and always rig those characters. Um, this is my first long, to, uh, not 2D, why I keep calling, calling it 2D, <laughs> 3D animated project and I, was, I don't have a, an established workflow uh, when it comes to 3D animation. I'm coming from a 2D background, 2D animated stuff. So it was a little bit frightening for me, but what I learned is like, you don't, you don't have to know everything to start. You just have to start. So with that in mind, I decided to try to stay organized. I failed miserably. I'm going to show you 
the main scene I used to make the whole animation except one scene which is this one over here that I will be breaking down for you in a second but before we get to that one let's uh, look at my main file and how messy that is you might think that this is organized I I <laughs> I beg a differ. In this particular scene, I made the chest pieces and I may manage to try to stay organized in the beginning, which I had the black pieces and the white pieces in separate collections. The chest board is very simple. I don't know if you need to have a tutorial for that, but in any case, any tutorial on YouTube, if you Google it, if you search for it, it will be clear. Uh, for the first uh, model of the monitor, I didn't have a sketch. Now again, if you cannot, if you, if you feel uncomfortable sketching, then you can do your research on Pinterest and find some inspiration there. But I find it easier for me to sketch the thing I want, I have in my mind, so I can see it and try to follow that blueprint, if you will. For the first one, I didn't have that, so it looks like the way it looks. Uh, my initial idea wanted to uh, have cables, uh, maybe tubes with liquid coming into it. Because, you know, futuristic and all that crap. Uh, but then that, I didn't do that. For the second monitor, I'm a bit more happier. If that's the word I I'm guess I'm going to use. Um, because for the second monitor, I sat down and I made a very basic sketch. Because I, I didn't know what exactly I wanted. And then I ended up doing this. Very simple monolith stuff. Nothing very complicated. But if you're a beginner, you might find this to be uh, traumatizing, I guess. Importing both of the the monitors, I did put them into a collection, which uh, TV TV one and TV two. In order to move the cables, I decided to attach them to uh, cubes. Once I move them, they move with it, and that was achieved with uh, having a hook element here and a hook element over here. So we have this um, follow up effect. I didn't know that I can use. There's an add-on that is called Wiggle Bones, which I guess like, it can achieve something like that, potentially. I will leave that in the link in the description. There is a tutorial reason to watch on that, so maybe you'll find it useful. I didn't do any rigging, and I think that was my main mistake in this whole thing, because none of this is rigged, which <laughs> made my time extremely long I, I i had to work around this quite a lot so in the middle part as i said then they will play chess so i wanted to be done with that part and jump into the the, the culmination if you will where once one of the players thinks they're winning and all of a sudden well they're not so the whole palm falling of the chessboard I didn't plan this. Once I got to that point, I was like, okay, I don't want to show it to happen on the chessboard itself, but I wanted to isolate this whole process to take your attention, the viewer's attention, into that particular uh, moment in the story because I thought that would be important. That was my main focus, right? So I had to figure out how I can isolate the pawn to be in a different scene. So I made this scene over here and I did a quick storyboard about this. I decided to have more flexibility to move the queen or the pawn transformation if you look. So I decided to make a completely new project taking the the um let's see this the bottom of the pawn because there's a point where the cap the top of the pawn just flies off like pops out so I took the base of the pawn and it took the rest of the queen and I added a, a bunch of extra details or extra objects I needed to make the pawn to be a little bit taller because it will be turned into a queen and the queen as a, as a chest piece it is taller than a pawn obviously so once you turn your mind into okay i need to make a transformation and how i can make this transformation smoother and to look realistic enough i don't think this is the most realistic pawn transformation there is a beautiful tutorial by this holy fjord i believe it's called channel they have amazing tutorials on blender very passionate about it 
and he has made a pawn, a transformation of a pawn into a queen, a little bit different, a little bit more sophisticated and nicer to look at. Mine was a bit butchered, and I'm still happy with what I got. I have the base of the pawn, and there's a cylinder coming from the center of the pawn, so can, we can make the pawn a little bit taller. And there's out of nowhere that uh, we appear with the base, I guess, of the crown and the top of the crown, which is this little ball, and then the crown appears as it does. And then we continue with this swirly effect. I have this as a piece. I also have this bottom base of the queen separately uh, as well to be build. I have the separate pieces of the queen uh, of the, I guess we could call this base of the crown, the crown itself and the top of the crown. All of them in different um, in different meshes, so I can move them around. Interesting about this for me, I didn't know that you can animate objects, your meshes. You can animate them when you go to edit mode. The way you have to do that, though, you can by default because you have to enable an add-on in Blender, which I believe is called Animation Anim All. So once you tick that, you can have uh it's here i believe yeah there you go. anim o is the add-on you should have this by default in blender and you can have keys on the location the bevel you can bevel them you can uh, animate the points the edges and the faces and others i did a mistake if you look here it, it has a face on top maybe ideally i shouldn't have had that um, but from the angle in the animation, you don't see it, so that's fine. Once I was done with this whole animation, I decided to import this into the other scene and then parent that to an empty object. That way, right, I can move it around and I won't be worrying about the animation, uh, of breaking the animation itself. So that was a, the, I, it's not rigging, but it's close, okay, but without rigging, uh, you will make your life terrible, miserable, <laughs> because then you end up with a huge mess, as you saw uh, in my main working file, which I will never do that again. So be organized, plan out your scenes so you don't have to redo them or make a mess, a mess out of them. I was planning out a scene, I was animating it and then rendering it immediately in cycles which took me roughly for a 10 second clip of animation roughly some of them were uh, shorter <laughs> around like an hour or less to render the image sequences uh and <laughs> once i had it done and i like, put it in my editing program the animation wasn't looking the way i i was looking through the viewport and sometimes depending on the machine it could be slower it could be faster uh, it's not very accurate, the animation you see on the viewport, so before you render your final animation of the, your, let's say you animate your scene, and before you render that scene, make sure, just for the sake of it, make sure you render the scene that you want in viewport render animation. So you will get something like this, which is not, you will find, it's not gonna, you don't wanna look at the way it does, but it will show you faster, one, I can show you faster what you did, your, your animation, so you can look at it and say, okay, my timing is off, or maybe, oh, I forgot to add this element to it because I, I have hidden it, or you see your mistakes way much easier rather to wait an hour, and then you see that you made a mistake, so you have to fix the mistake and then wait another hour to render the whole thing. It's, uh, yeah, not ideal, right? So before you render that, Always to make sure you go to to output settings and make a make a separate folder. You can call it whatever viewport queen render depending on your scene. Maybe pick a lower resolution for um, the PNGs and then go here on view and then viewport render animation. And then you're gonna wait a little bit, not an hour, but less. Now, the other thing I wanted to point out was the view editing program and how I render my, my scenes. There are like a bunch of scenes that glued together, I colored it, I add the effects I wanted to, I add the sound effects as well. And once I was happy with the whole render thing, uh, I had the text and everything, uh, 
I don't know what's the ideal format to render your final animation in Blender using Resolve, but recently there's a course about this that I will be looking at, and I highly recommend the course for you as well. It's on the Resolve and how to use it properly and render your animations into a video format uh, as a final format. Uh, it's in the link in the description. That's my first ever animation in Blender. There's a lot of mistakes as a beginner, even though I'm intermediate. Yes, I am. Believe it or not. I guess I have to believe it. I know. But all in all, if you're someone who wants to make any animated film in Blender, short or long, obviously start. That's my biggest advice to anyone. Just, just start. If, even if you don't feel prepared enough or whatever, the biggest step is to start. And as you see, I have encountered a lot of uh, problems along the way, but I also found a solution to those problems. And now I know a little bit better next time when I'm gonna make my next short film in Blender, I will be a little bit more prepared and maybe not as scared as, as initially I was. I hope this video was helpful. It's a bit more or less technical, but I hope it was uh, helpful in the end, and hopefully you, if you know someone watching this, that you are probably working on your uh, 3D film right now, you could, you can take something away uh, from this. So, thank you again for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.